Okay, talking about 1.2 solving multi-step equations, first thing we need to understand are what like terms are and distributed property means. That'll help us to simplify expressions, which helps us to solve the equations. So for instance, if I have uh, multiple terms, so for instance, like 3x um, plus 4 plus 2x, these are terms, and they're terms because they're separated by addition symbols. Um, so we actually have one, two, three terms, okay, because they're separated by addition. Now, if I added another one there, I could go minus x, and now I have four terms, because addition and subtraction symbols separate terms. When I'm dealing with like terms, I'm actually looking for terms that are being raised to the same power and have the same variable. So, for instance, 3x, and we take the symbol in front, plus 2x, that gives me 5x. And then we can bring down this minus x and the plus 4. Notice I keep taking the symbols that are in front of them. Okay, well, 5x minus x, that's a, whenever we just see x, that's a 1x, so that gives me 4x's. And we bring this down, plus 4. Now, just because they're both 4 doesn't mean they're like terms. Since this 4 is lacking an x, uh, these are unlike terms. Here I'm counting up x's. Here I'm counting up single units. I have x plus x plus x plus x. I have four x's. And here I just have one plus one plus one plus one. I'm counting different things. So that would be as far as I can go. That would be simplifying by combining like terms. Now, distributive property is a bit different. Distributive property says if I have sets of something, like a set of x plus twos, like we're collecting x plus twos. Like that's what everyone wants to collect. You know? Okay, so x plus two, and I have three of them. So I have three sets of x plus 2. That means I have x plus 2, there's one set, plus another set of x plus 2, plus another set of x plus 2. Remember, multiplication right here just means repeated addition. It means you have three of these being added up. Now, really, the parentheses don't mean anything. So I have x plus 2, and actually, let me get rid of that parenthesis there real quick. Um, we will erase that. And it's a little quicker just going over here. Okay. And then plus another x plus 2, since the parentheses don't mean anything. Just dropping them there. And then I can think about having these things next to each other. I have x plus x plus x. Kind of a messy looking x. And then I have 2 plus 2 plus 2. Okay, so really that means I have three x's plus six. Three x plus six. Okay, so distributive property, the quick way to get there is just going three times x, that gives me the three x. Then three times two, which gives me the six. Notice I have three x's and three twos. That's the quick way, method. Okay, now that we know that, we can actually solve some multi-step equations. First thing I'm going to have you do, just like on the previous lesson, is to draw a line oops, draw a line down the equal sign. Okay? And that's going to balance out the equations. Now I have two expressions. I have an expression on this side, 3x plus 5x minus 2, an expression on this side. I need to simplify both sides first. Now obviously I can't do anything to 14, but what I could do over here, 3x and 5x, when I combine those like terms, that it's 8x's. 8x and then we'll bring down the minus 2 equals 14. Okay, and now we just balance out the equation by doing inverse operations. Since they're subtracting 2, we add 2. We end up with 8x equals 16. And then to undo multiplication, we use division. So 1x equals Remember, you can always check your work. Plug the 2 back in. So 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 plus 10 is 16 minus 2. That equals 14, which is exactly what we said it equals, so we're good to go. x equals 2. Okay? This one we do the same thing. Draw that line. Can't simplify over here, but over here we can look at the like terms. We have x and 2x. We could write them next to each other if, if that helps out. You'll see that a lot, especially in textbooks. I just like to circle my like terms. So x plus 2x is 3x minus 9 equals 18. We'll go ahead and add 9 to both sides. 
just doing inverse operations. Since they subtracted 9, we added 9. We get 3x equals 27, and they're multiplying by 3, so we divide by 3. So 1x equals 9. And once again, checking it out, plug 9 in there, we get 9 minus 9 plus 2 times 9 is 18 equals, well, that's 0 plus 18, which is 18. So it checks out. Okay. Moving on to the next one. We're now going to add in some distributive property to solve these. So um, first step, let's go. Whoa, I think I may have zoomed in there. All right. First step, I zoomed in again. First step is going to be to do the distributive property. So we get 3y minus 12. So 3 times y and 3 times negative 4 minus 12. Minus 7 equals negative 1. Now you notice I said negative 4 because there's a minus in front of it. Okay, so that gives me 3y. And those two like terms, that's a negative 12 and negative 7. I have 12 negatives and 12, or in 7 negatives, that's 19 negatives. Equals negative 1. We'll go ahead and add 19 to both sides. Since we are done simplifying the side, we can't put 3y and 19 together, so we'll start undoing it by moving things over to the other side. Add 19. You end up with 3y left here and 18 on this side. And that conveniently gives me, divide by 3, divide by 3, 1y is 6. Once again, we go back to checking it. If I quit zooming in there. <laughs> Switching slides. Oh. All right. There we go. So we get 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 7. That equals negative 1, so we're good to go. All right. So the next step here, I'm going to try this one. You'll notice on this one there's a negative sign right outside that parenthesis. Okay? So we're going to bring in that negative. Negative and negative. So we end up with 2x. And negative times x is negative x. And negative times 7 is minus 7. Plus 5 equals 17. Okay. And we'll go back here. We'll put these two together. 2x minus x is 1x. 1x minus 7 plus 5 equals 17. I can still keep simplifying over here. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So x minus 2, okay, putting those two together, equals 17. Then, now that we can't simplify anything else, we'll add 2 to both sides. We end up with 1x equals 19. Once again, checking our work, 2 times 19 here is 38 minus x plus 7, or 19 plus 7 is 26 plus 5. Well, 38 minus 26, that's 12. 12 plus 5, that happens to be 17, so we're good. And the last one, go ahead and distribute this. I put this one in here because now we see a 2 times a 3x. Well, 2 times 3x, that just means you multiply the number. That gives you 6x. If you have two 3x's, that's 3x plus 3x, or 6x. And 2 negative 5 is negative 10. Can't put anything else together, so we'll add 10. Start moving things over to the other side. We get 6x is negative. 25. And we'll divide by 6. Divide by 6. We end up with 1x is equal to negative 25, 6. Now that's a bit ugly, but you should always check that. So if I, you probably need a little more room to check something like that. So if you're doing that, that's where you may have to actually put it in there. And if I could quit switching my slides around here, that would make it a lot easier, but Okay, so we'll have um, 2 times 3 times negative 25 over 6 minus 5 equals negative 35. Put a 1 under it, that be cross cancel, that becomes a 2, that becomes a 1. We get 2 times negative 25 halves minus 5 equals negative 35. 
negative 25 halves. 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. So 2 times negative 12 and a half minus 5 equals negative 35, we're hoping. Negative 12 and a half, negative 5, that is negative 17.5. And 2 negative 17.5 is negative 35. So negative 35 equals negative 35. We are good. A little ugly, but that's the correct answer. All right, that's all there is to it.